So it's been a little while since my last fan mail. I've got a little bit of stuff stored up here. So uh, let's get started with this. I'm guessing this will probably be broken up into two parts because this is a lot of stuff. Very sorry for the delay. Part of it was actually that I uh, I forgot to um, pay for my box and the annual subscription kind of renewed. So I had to um, get my box unlocked to gain access to everything. There's also just been a busy month between July being so busy with so many releases and then back to school. Uh, life just gets, gets busy. First up, uh, we have a book from Ryan and a note. Oh, this is pretty cool. So this is a book that Ryan wrote. And I guess his, his boys asked him to write a book where they were the heroes. So he wrote a book for his boys. Oh, that is cool. That is, now you're making me feel like I need to do, do more to, to do stuff for my kids, but very cool. So you can check that out right there. His book, The Dawn of AI, or Paper War, The Dawn of AI. So there it is, very nice. Thank you very much for that. That is, that is a cool, fun story. Okay, gotcha. So this one goes along with the other one over here. Other, I guess an additional paperwork. I don't know which one is the first, which one is the second, but um, kind of sent me, I don't know if there's more in here, but uh, two different paper wars books. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's the sort of little things that you can do of using your skills to uh, honor and show your kids that, how much you value them. That's, that is very cool. This is from Adam Bryant. I just stabbed myself in the leg. See, you guys were always nervous when my kids were in here um, opening stuff with me. You don't have to be worried when my kids are here. You have to be worried when it's just me. I will get myself very injured on my own. Okie dokie. We have a note. Very cool, very cool. So just thanking me for my channel and my content. And he said that he has a YouTube channel where this is kind of interesting there. What they do is that they, they compare movies to their novelizations. And so he sent me a bunch of movies that I love, franchises that I love and the novelization. So Rocky, and this is, I mean, this is ancient, right? Almost, most of these are pretty ancient. Uh, Rocky, Iron Man, Star Trek The Motion Picture, Spider-Man, Man of Steel, Batman 89. I, I believe I had this one. I, In fact, maybe somewhere in my garage I still have it, but this is one that I believe that we even bought, uh, our family bought back in the day. And then Jaws 2. That's fascinating, in particular when you know the, like, the history of novelizations and how they used to work. You know, before, uh, you know, nowadays we get the turnaround for a movie comes out and it's on video. It's, Sometimes it's the same day, 45 days, pretty standard in the last couple of years. But back in the day, it took a long time. Or even like with Rocky, video technology was brand new in the late 70s. So it even for, before you could watch it just on home easily, it took a long, long time. And so then they would do novelizations. And they're, they're normally given a good bit of like freedom to like, go with it. Like they don't have the final film even to watch it. The person doing the novelization does not have the movie in front of them because this is before video back way back in the day. So novelizations could be like interesting little pieces of history. So back in the day we had um, Star Wars, the first Star Wars. And it says at the beginning from the Journal of the Wills is what it said at the beginning of the novelization. I was like, what are the Journal of the Wills? What is this? And that was like this idea that George Lucas had a draft before the shooting draft. This idea of the wills and the way it all kind of played out. And so it was like, not quite the final version of the script is what he was working off of. It was very, very close. And so it had this idea of the wills that doesn't get mentioned in a movie until Rogue One. And it's only loosely mentioned in there. And so I read that as a kid, like, what is this? What is going on here? And it's because there's those little details that often change things up so much. 
And then the, the one that's the most interesting to me is the Rambo franchise, where the first Rambo is based off of a book. And then 10 years later, they make a movie out of it and they change the ending. Actually, it's quite pretty different. There's quite a few changes in, from First Blood. That's the name of the first Rambo movie to the, the book and the movie. There, there's some changes in there. But the big one is the ending and whether Rambo lives or dies. Movie he lives. And so it turns into a sequel. They do a sequel to it. And in the contract, the, the writer of the book said only he gets to write Rambo books. So the scenario comes around where he has to write a sequel to his own book where he killed the character off. It is a very dark ending. And in, in the movie, they didn't. So he writes the novelization that it, he writes the sequel to, to a different ending. And he was working off a very, very different script from what was in or than what was filmed and what was released. There was a version of it that like, well, James Cameron wrote one of the main scripts for um, Rambo 2. And John Travolta was going to be it as a sidekick for a little while. There were extra characters, all this other stuff kind of going on with it. And then Stallone rewrote it, added politics into it. And so the book, wildly different from the movie that you actually see. Same thing happened with Rambo 3. Same thing. Writer killed off Rambo in the first book, writes the second sequel where Rambo's alive. Very different. Very different um, additional characters, additional subplots. So novelizations can be very interesting, different takes on a story that, that you, you've checked out and that you love and care about. So anyway, um, yeah, I'll, that's very cool that you, you sent those. And I'm always curious what changes are in there. In, like the older you get, um, the, the wilder and crazier the novelizations end up being. But even like with um, Rise of Skywalker, doesn't fix the movie or doesn't fix the story, but there's all these, a couple little extra lines in there that make the story make quite a bit more sense. Hey, thank you guys so much for your generosity. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you've given me many movies to, to watch, things to read. And those of you just watching, thank you so much that you care what I have to say about anything. It really does mean the world to me. And keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.